Okay, thank you, Tracy. It's an honor to be here. Not our first rodeo. Uh, we IPO'd in 2012 and have raised $14 million along the way. Uh, most of it uh, in the pursuit of developing the, initially the algae market. Uh, worldwide, it uh, exploded on the scene in 2011 with what you just heard called peak oil. Oil was supposedly on the way to 200, according to CIBC and others. And in that market, governments got scared, especially American government. They put a half a billion dollars into three of their chosen um, uh, leaders in the world of algae, Solazyme that IPO'd for 1.2 billion. Uh, they only had 20 million of revenue when they started, 10 of which was for US military jet fuel for renewable algae. One was called Sapphire. They actually were trialing our equipment at that time, and, Sol uh, and then Algenol in Florida. Well, two of the three are bankrupt, and uh, barely hanging on is Algenol. Uh, Solazyme led up to $2, million, sorry, $2 billion value. It sold for $30 million last fall. So what we IPO'd for was providing them dissolved carbon to accelerate their algae growth more efficiently. And we mothballed that in 2014 for a few years, as oil prices didn't go to 200, they went to 25. Along the way, uh, my partners, John and Aaron, Aaron being up here, are gonna talk about operations in a minute. Um, they wound up with the core of the technology that I actually invested in in 1999, when Joseph Sute, he claimed he was 20 year overnight success. That same year, Dow Chemical left Canada and a variety of people and facilities in Sarnia behind, and the twice scientist of the year, Craig Glassford, got to keep the technology he was working on. Craig reached out to John Archibald in Singapore, and he left a, a major job out there because he believed in this technology to come back to North America and develop it commercially. He showed up in my door at Scotia Capital, where I, with five others, were, were convinced after he claimed this technology could dissolve, accelerate dissolving hydrocarbons spilt in groundwater. The one I was interested in was called methanol-based MTBE. Methanex, the stock price was falling 90% at that time. I was a Methanex analyst at Scotia Capital. And John claimed and showed us that he could accelerate bacteria growth in water by dissolving oxygen instantaneously without bubbles. Boom. I was sold with uh, four others. And here I am 18 years later with John rejoining because the 400,000 he did raise half through me. Uh, he got $12 million for that. So a modest success, 30X over 18 years. But the biggest opportunity by far for dissolving any gas into any solution is carbon and carbon for plants and more specifically plant leaves. So on that note, I'll let Aaron get going here in a minute. I just wanna go through the market cap and partly why we're here. I gotta do this, we're public, TSX Venture Grow. We're very happy we got that symbol. It's all we do is help plants grow better. Yes, including buds. So our cap table at the moment is about 40 million shares. John, Aaron and I agreed with the board a year ago to work for no cash comp for two years to restart this mothballed business for algae, except for a market 10,000 times bigger called plants. And uh, those bonus shares were approved with a 99% approval rating, our name change restructuring, our board restructuring, our management restructuring were all done just a month ago. And Aaron will go through the milestones of what we've, what we've done since we started last summer. <clears throat> the 20 cent warrants up there are from a, a, a deal done 18 months ago. They expire all this year. They're worth about $4 million to us. I'm actively making a market between new potential buyers and the existing warrant holders of which I am one. Um, I want to see those get exercised and we're in the process of doing that. That'll be all the money we'll need for as far as we can see going forward because Aaron has all the equipment to do all the trials we need. And he'll go through some of the economics here in a minute. Um, and that's about it. Fully diluted 87 would have a hypothetically $5 million on our books. And uh, at this point, Aaron, can you go through operations and strategy? Thanks. The company mission is to utilize our patented CO2 foliar spray and gas infusion technologies within the ag space to increase yield and growth for ag agritech partners. Some of the milestones since John and I joined are July 17, we restarted the dormant CO2 licenses that we'd granted the company several years before. Um, we also filed a provisional patent for a CO2 foliar spray. We did some research and realized that no one had ever thought to put gas into liquid and utilize it to fertilize plants. 
Uh, we changed the CEO, John is our new CEO, and at the end of last year, we raised another $600,000 with current shareholders, another $300,000 through warrants exercised. So we purchased and assembled all the trial equipment, which we've been implementing and running trials this year. So trials started in February of this year on indoor cannabis and microgreen applications. Some of the key milestones we need to achieve in the next year is as, uh, further patent support for our foliar spray technologies, increasing the number of trials that we are doing, as well as starting outdoor growth trials in California and uh, Arizona and Colorado. We expect our first revenue to be in Q3 of this year. It'll be through site licensing and patent applications. So here's a list of our patents that we're holding right now. We have a few more in the works that we can't discuss at present, but we'll be filing shortly. To give you an idea of how big the market is for foliar spray, we're gonna be focusing on cannabis for the first vertical. We're gonna commercialize that and we're gonna spread our wings and move into the other verticals. To give you an idea of revenue potential, that's a $9 trillion market cap. And we can count on 25% of that at wholesale value being two and a quarter trillion dollars annually. With half of that being irrigated, we're slightly over $1 trillion. And if we can make 1% market penetration and charge a 10% royalty fee on extra yield, we'll see $225 million in revenue for the company annually. Where it shows a lot of value right now is in bud growth. And to uh, a 1 million square foot greenhouse puts out five crops a year right now. And at $5 per gram, that's a million dollars per crop. Our bud trials are showing that we can do six crops a year. That's pretty simple math. It's an extra $100 million to the bottom line. Where we expect to see significant uptake in the market is on outdoor growth. Outdoor growth is limited to one crop per year, and they have no way to apply CO2 to it. The only way they can do that is through our dissolved foliar spray technology. And it will be most used in arid areas. So like the California Central Valley, where most fruit and vegetables grown for North America, they irrigate every crop there. And it works best with large leafy, leafy things like cannabis, lettuce, uh, potatoes, spinach. We also have a new partnership with an urban agriculture company named Grocer. It's a small part of the market right now, but we think it's gonna be growing significantly and we have got several trials utilizing the technology with them. Our equipment is easily scalable and integratable. In fact, every customer that we have already has the infrastructure in place because they're currently irrigating. They simply have to phase in the use of the COT foliar spray gas infusion, and they can use all their existing infrastructure with no added costs. <clears throat> One of the reasons foliar spray is going to be so popular with greenhouse applications is that most of the CO2 they're presently buying is lost, more than 60% of it. One of the reasons that dissolving CO2 into water makes sense is because as a gas, it's so miscible. You can easily bring, put it up to 2,000 parts per million under one atmosphere. When you apply that water to the plant, all of that CO2 is driven across the leaf, which is a semi-permeable membrane, much like our skin is if someone were to use a nicotine patch. And with CO2 costs for a half million square foot greenhouse being between two and $400,000, that's a significant operational savings, as well as an increase in their yield. This is a, Sam, do you want to take over for the uh, board? Thank you, Aaron. I've been with this board since the beginning, which wasn't the 2012 IPO, it's in 2007, when we uh, joined with two US companies in a LLC in uh, Seattle. One actually uh, built a $5 million algae plant in Mexico for beta carotene algae, and one that uh, still exists today called Ray Technologies is one of the best harvesting technology is complex to take algae, which never gets beyond 20 microns, about one-tenth the size of your human hair. It's hard to get out the nutrition of that algae, and Ray Technologies proved to us that they're pretty good at it, and they're still kicking. Um, so I've been with this since the beginning. I was also the largest shareholder until the IPO. Um, I'm the second largest shareholder right now. Our largest is Alpha North. That's public information. And uh, for the most time since IPO, because it's also public, Pathfinder in, in Vancouver, 
was our initial uh, lead shareholder. So we have a number of institutions that participate with us. Mike Boyd, uh, we retained right at the beginning of the IPO. He's, he, he goes back to working with uh, Austin Butel and Ned Goodman. Uh, he set up the Argosy Fund, Acorn Fund, and he had one of the first small cap funds in, uh, in Canada back in the early 80s with uh, Austin and Ned. Uh, he provides great governance. He's also at ICD. Um, Dr. Gord Sergner is our most recent uh, addition to the board. Gord is in our Ontario Agricultural Hall of Fame. He's been involved in the business for 40 years. I heard this morning somebody was a, a bug specialist. That's what Gord got his PhD in, uh, entomology at uh, Michigan State. And Gord spent 20 years helping early stage companies get quick funding in Guelph with OAFT and also a professor at University of Guelph for uh, about 15 years before that. So his network is invaluable to us get going here in a variety of different ways in governance as well in the ag science community. So that's our newest member. Uh, other two new members, uh, actually one returning, Dr. Matt Julius at St. Cloud State is doing our parallel lettuce trials to duplicate what the University of Guelph did. They grew beach ball sized lettuce for us uh, back in 2013, we're replicating that. Nobody wants to eat a beach ball sized lettuce, but if you grow it twice as fast, because it's all leaves, then we could produce twice as many crops. That'll be very meaningful in places like California. Um, and also uh, Murray McLaughlin, Dr. McLaughlin uh, is Canada's leading known bioeconomy ambassador. Um, I, he recruited me to join the Bioindustrial Innovations Canada board after I retired from Scotia Capital to work on sustainable, renewable bioeconomy uh, investments. So I'm on the investment committee. Uh, we have government mon money from Ottawa, Ontario, we have had for quite a while, and we're looking for investments for pre-commercial early stage up to half a million dollars each. We need about seven or eight more good ones. Uh, and uh, I'm interconnected on the investment committee with our portfolio manager and CEO to do that. So I'm participating in a venture capital fund in ag tech or bio, bio advantaged patented uh, technologies that will benefit Canada. So that's how I give back some of my time. So that's it for us. Yeah.